Unit 3.2, Statically Indeterminate Axially Loaded Structures. The course outcome that we're working on in this unit is to dis demonstrate the ability to calculate stress and deflection of axially loaded structures. The outcomes for this lesson are to first understand the principle of superposition, and then solve for support reactions and internal forces and stresses in statically indeterminate axially loaded structures. Let's begin with the first outcome, the principle of superposition. What the principle of superposition allows us to do is to take a structure with some complex loading and break it into two or more simpler structures. For each simpler structure we can calculate the reactions or the internal forces or stresses in the individual problems, then combine the answers through addition to get the reactions or internal forces or whatever it may be for the original structure. That's very powerful. Here's another example. This is an axially loaded member with two forces on it. We can take this somewhat complex condition and break it into two simpler structures. We could calculate the deflection in each one. Then we can get the total deflection for the original structure by adding the deflections of these two separate problems together. That's going to be very useful to us and it allows us to solve some problems we could not do before. This principle of superposition is going to be useful to us throughout the semester. Now there are some limitations. The principle of superposition only applies to structures that are behaving linearly elastically. This axially loaded structure is supported at both ends, at A and at C. There is a point load of 20 kilonewtons acting at B. If I draw a free body diagram of the structure, it'll look like this. I have a reaction at A that is counteracting this applied load of 20 kilonewtons, and a reaction at C that is also countering this applied load. If I sum the forces in the x direction equal to zero, I get 20 kilonewtons minus the reaction at x minus the reaction at C is equal to zero. Now there are two unknown variables in this equation and we have no more equations of static equilibrium to solve this problem. So this is a statically indeterminate structure, which means we don't have enough equations of static equilibrium to solve for all the unknown reactions. However, we can use this principle of superposition that we discussed before to solve for the reactions in this structure. Let me provide a little more information for the structure we were looking at previously. Let's say we have dimensions of 400 millimeters from A to B and 800 millimeters from B to C. We also know the structural material. It is A36 steel and the member has a diameter of 0 0.02 meters. Now using the principle of superposition, we can break this structure into two simpler to handle structures. And I'm going to do that by first removing the wall at C and drawing the structure like this. And what's going to happen when I remove the wall at C? Well, the structure can now stretch under this applied load of 20 kilonewtons. And when it stretches, the end will deflect an amount we'll call delta C. That's the deflection at C as a result of this 20 kilonewton load. But the wall at C will not allow this deflection to occur. The wall is going to push back. And we will represent that with this next diagram that shows the force of the wall, which we'll call C sub x, pushing back, and it's going to push that structure some amount we'll call delta f, that will push it back to its original starting length. Now at this point, we can write what is called an equation of compatibility, or our compatibility equation. And what that's going to do is relate these two deflections, delta C in this problem and delta F in this problem. And it will look like this. The deflection at C is equal to the deflection at F. The next step is to expand the deltas with the equation PL over AE, the axial deflection equation we discussed in the last unit. Now let's replace values for PL, A, and E with the values from these problems. Let's begin with delta C. And with delta C we're looking at this structure right here. Okay, if we plot the internal axial force P 
from A to C, we will get a diagram that looks like this. From A to B, there is an internal force of 20 kilonewtons. And it is feeling tension, so that's going to be a positive 20 kilonewtons. At point B, all the way to point C, there are no other external loads applied. So the internal force is zero. So we will expand our PL over AE equation as follows. P is equal to 20 kilonewtons. The length is the length over which that 20 kilonewtons is acting, and that's from A to B. That's 400 millimeters, or 0.4 meters. A and E, we'll just leave in that form. Now let's expand this equation. For delta F, we are looking at this part of the problem down here in this diagram. If we were to plot the internal axial load P, it would be a force of CX from A all the way to C. And CX is compression, so that's shown here as a compression force and constant from A to C. Now we will fill in the equation. Uh, the force P is equal to CX, and the length is the length over which that force is acting. It's the whole length of the structure, 1200 millimeters or 1.2 meters. Notice I didn't put a negative CX in this equation even though it's feeling compression. That's because we are just comparing magnitudes of deflection here. So the sign doesn't really matter. Now we can solve this equation for CX and we see that the AE on top and bottom cancel out so CX is equal to 6.67 kilonewtons. Going back to the free body diagram that we drew before, we can substitute CX is 6.67 kilonewtons and solve this equation for AX and AX is equal to 13.33 kilonewtons. And here I can draw a completed free body diagram. Using our equation of compatibility, we were able to write a new equation to add to our equation of static equilibrium that gave us enough equations to solve for our unknown reactions. Now there's an alternative method besides the force method that we just discussed, which will yield the same results. I'll call it the balanced deflection method. And we'll start with the same structure we had before, but we'll look at it in a different way. Instead of using the principle of superposition as we did with the force method, we will look at the deflection that occurs at B when we apply this 20 kilonewton load. Now let's first look at the structure from A to B. When we put 20 kilonewton load at B, from A to B that length will actually increase. It will get longer and that change in length we'll call delta AB. And what's happening from B to C? When we apply that load, B to C must get shorter, and we can call that deflection delta BC. Now we can write a compatibility equation, which will be that this delta AB is equal to this delta BC. And now we expand those as follows. For delta AB, that is the change in length from A to B, the internal load we can find by drawing this internal force diagram. From A to B, the internal force will be AX, and that will be in tension. From B to C, the internal force will be CX, and that will be in compression. And the difference between the two is the external load, 20 kilonewtons. So expanding this equation for delta AB, P is AX, and the length is the length from A to B, which is 400 millimeters or 0.4 meters. In the delta BC equation, the internal force P is CX, and the length over which it's acting is the length from B to C, which is 800 millimeters or 0.8 meters. Solve for AX, we see that the AEs cancel out, and we can get a term for AX in terms of CX. In this case, AX is equal to 2 times CX. Now, using the equation of static equilibrium that we found before, we can substitute in this value for AX is equal to 2CX, and solve for CX is equal to 6.67 kilonewtons. Plug that back into this equation here, solve for AX, and we get AX is equal to 13.33 kilonewton. The same answer we got using the force method.
and the problem is complete and we're done.